Hey everybody, I hope you are having a fantastic day. I would like to introduce you to what I think is the most underrated Linux distro in the universe. It's called Diet Pi. Diet Pi runs really well on all sorts of high power and low power devices. For the purpose of this tutorial though, we're going to run it on a Raspberry Pi. Just click this button and get the download started. So what makes Diet Pi so life-changing? Well, simply put, it turns your Raspberry Pi into a server. So why does that matter? Well, think about it this way. When you are sitting at your Raspberry Pi with a keyboard and mouse and monitor, you're asking it to do all sorts of other things. It needs to run a GUI, it needs to power a monitor, it needs to look for input on the USB, and that's just a lot of work that bogs down your little Raspberry Pi. But when you turn it into a server, it can concentrate on just running the applications that you care about because the underlying OS is so much lighter. Beyond that, the people at Diet Pi did all the hard work of optimizing the world's most popular software and making it available as a one-click install, which means that whether you want to run Node-RED or Mosquito or start your own Apache server or set up Octoprint, you can do all of that with just one click. They handle all of the updates and the security patches for you, and you can go about your business. Now that we've downloaded the image, if you do not already have it, you're going to want to download a program called Belena Etcher at Belena.io, and we're going to fire that up and burn the image. Once you've fired up the program, you can click over here to select your image. You may have to unzip that file, uh, and then you're going to select the target, and I'm going to do this 32 gig SD card. Now, the fact is you can use four gigs fairly comfortably. Eight gigs is better and more may or may not be better depending on uh, what kind of thing you're trying to build. So we're going to select that and we're going to hit flash. It took a little over 30 seconds to burn that image and now I'm going to take the SD card out, put it in my Pi, hook up a keyboard and mouse and boot it. So although we could sit there with the keyboard and enter a bunch of commands, I would encourage you to manage this thing like a server. And so what I would like for you to consider doing is to go to Ninite.com, and this is a great place to get software if you don't want a bunch of other crap installed with it. And I would encourage you to get Putty, and while you're at it, you might also want to get WinSCP. Um, those are both server management tools that I use all the time. So you'll just click that, you'll get your Ninite, and it will install with no toolbars and no junk. So once you get that, we are going to take the IP address that's shown on the screen, and we're going to go, mine's going to be different than yours, but I'm going to put 192.168.95.151. And you're going to get this error popping up, and it's going to ask you if you want to cache that key. You're going to hit yes, and then you're going to enter the password of root and diet pi. At this point, it's going to walk you through some initial setup, and we're going to let it do that. So as much as I love Diet Pi, I am not super interested in sharing any analytics data with them. So I'm going to opt out and I am going to change my password to one that is not the default. Go ahead and disable the serial console. So we are back at the config screen. We're going to do just a couple more things. We're going to come in here and we are going to set some localization options, language and regional. We are going to tell it our time zone. I am in, uh, what would that be? I'm in America. And then we'll start typing in New York. There we go. And I'm going to definitely want my keyboard to be the US keyboard because if I use symbols in my passwords I won't be able to type them in properly so fantastic uh, English US layout the default layout fantastic no compose key okay so we're gonna hit back and exit and okay the next thing I'd like you to do is to change the SSH server from DropBear to OpenSSH. The main reason why I like to do this is this SCP support. This allows you to use an FTP type program to copy files back and forth, which is super handy. 
And now the fun part. We're going to come in here and look at the software. Now, you can install whatever you want. Uh, I am doing this kind of from a maker perspective, so I'm going to be installing some things. I'll talk about a few of these as we go down. You can install Kodi, which is a great little media center program. You can install OwnCloud, which is great for bringing your files into the cloud and a cloud that is not controlled by any of the big titans. Uh, there's some other RSS options and camera options and all that kind of stuff, but we are going to install LAMP, which is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. You don't need to install that if you don't want to, but if you do, I recommend you installing PHP MyAdmin. We're not going to go over configuring these in this video, but we're just going to install them. Um, I highly recommend installing CertBot, which will allow you to get SSL certificates for your different projects. You can install Pi-hole for ad blocking if you like. And then we are going to come up here and install some of the maker stuff. So we're going to install Mosquito. We're going to install Node Red. You may want to go ahead and install Blink. We'll go ahead and do that in this one. Uh, if you're into data and you want to do Influx and Grafana, those are very cool for visualizing things if you want to put a bunch of sensor data and stuff like that in here. There were a couple of them that I missed when I went through this the first time that I thought I'd go ahead and show you. There are a few different VPN options if you want to set up your Pi as a VPN so that you can access your home network from anywhere in the world. You may also want to install No IP, which allows you to always know your home IP address and last but not least if you have a 3d printer you may want to consider installing octoprint which can help you uh, manage your 3d printer from a distance when we're done we're going to go ahead and hit ok and then we're going to hit install and this will take a little while when everything is done, you will get the screen and then you will reboot. Now note that if you set a static IP address, that you'll need to log back in with a different IP address next time. Now at this point, you can actually just start using the software. It's all set to auto start on boot. So for instance, if you want to go to Node Red, you would put in the IP address of the Pi. And then colon 1880, because that's the port and you will have a brand new install of node red if you want to visit your apache server you can just visit the ip address and so on and so forth whatever tools you have you will generally access them through the browser at the ip address of the pi so if you did php my admin then there's your PHP MyAdmin loading up right now. So that is the basics of how to download and install Diet Pi and get yourself a server configured in just about half an hour. Hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day.